Hey guys, welcome back to Blue Z Water Channel. We're here with Andrew Scheim, our founding practitioner of Blue Z Water. I'm Chris, and we're going to do a little subconscious mind healing and tools and techniques here with Andrew to explain and kind of talk how we can help you guys out with the subconscious mind and healing all those mental issues. Thank you. Good morning. Okay, so the last couple of videos we were using the Hopa Onopono model, the Hawaiian teachings on healing the subconscious mind and trying to lay out steps. So the, and then we had a tool for regulating fear, showing the chi machine in the last video. How did you enjoy uh, using that, by the way? I love that one. I mean, that's one of the tools I think is, is one of my favorites just because the way it moves your body and you can feel it, especially with the different chakras and the, the, the points and everything. It's, it's pretty awesome. In fact, Chris and I were just talking this morning about anger. It was very interesting having a little personal conversation. And one of the things uh, really at the heart center of the Hopopono teachings is, is really being able to go back to your wounds and emotions and, and be nurturing to where you were and feeling nurtured as a child, where you felt alone, where you were in a reactive state like anger. You can put yourself in a much more uh, healing, nurturing uh, movement, which was what the Chi Machine was about, and allow those emotions to, in a healing way, come up. They're still very strong, but now you're kind of nurturing yourself. Maybe that's the piece that that's uh, always been missing with a lot of us is that we don't realize we can actually nurture ourselves, and then then allow these emotions and memories to come up. And that's a lot of what the Hawaiian uh, teachings is about: finding ways to bring up the memories, invite them up, but in a peaceful healing way as yeah. opposed to a reactive way. I think a lot of people try to suppress the memories, you know, so they bury them down there and and this seems like a way better way to actually let them out and in a safer and better fashion, right. you know. And safety is an yeah, it's an interesting word. Safety is the percept is a perception because when we're in situations where we can't move or we were talking about flight or freeze or fight, fight or freeze and a lot of humans when they're under attack or judged, which is a form of attack you know, said you're a bad child, you're not smart, you're not strong enough, whatever, you're not pretty enough. You know, what do you do in that moment? You, you freeze. You feel under attack psychologically. So we didn't think, you know, imagine being in school and some teacher makes you feel bad and you go off and do a, you know, start doing a healing practice. They throw you out of school. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> a little weird. Yeah. But that's what we all needed, so we actually have to go back into our memories, and then we're going to talk about some work today that helps you do that and revisit those scenes where you didn't have that option to go do a healing practice. So you're, in a sense, what we're talking about is a, a loving redo of memories where you bring in that third option, self-love, yeah. and things that you can do, which, you, which unfortunately most parents don't teach their children. Uh, naturally, a loving parent will rock a baby. Babies get a lot of compassion, but at a certain age, there's a lot of stereotypes. Now you're going to act like a girl or a boy, and you know, in the old school, you know, at a certain age, touch or kindness to a, a kid, a, a young boy, you know, shake hands. It was very, you know, that was the old school. And that's pretty rough. Now I think it's softened up these days, but um, still, as the help opponent teacher says, is that is there really ever enough? self-love and compassion you can show to your own inner being and he is always talking about Dr. Yuen. he's talking with his inner child that there's a book on Kindle and I have to go we'll put a link below I'll yeah, find we'll it. Find it. and they're always talking about having a conversation with a three-year-old or an eight-year-old depending on what's going on and what memories are being brought up and actually showing that kindness and having that conversation and feedback so the, another question where we want to bring up is where does the water fit into all these practices of, of communing with your own inner being? Yeah, so I think Blue Z Water, being that that's our, our main product for detoxing the body, mind, and soul, how does that actually detox the mind and the soul? And how does it, what's its part in, in taking rid of these emotions and memories that we have suppressed down? And how do we bring them up with the water? Well... Let's just look at a moment of trauma and what happens. So, again, fight, flight, or freeze. So when somebody has a memory or they, they go into like a mini freeze and they record the memory, but their body also freezes. 
So, in a sense, and in working on people, when you get a lot of freezes, the body becomes more brittle. It, it, it locks up, and it, and it can't move. Now, one of the things water does is it moves, and it has energy. So, and if you think about the, what we call dehydration, well, the more psychological freezing you have, it, that seizing up creates like a... It's like a mental dehydration. Right, yeah. or, a, <laughs> or a stuck... At, what, part of dehydration, when something's dehydrated, it's not mobile, it's not fluidic, yeah. and it's not flexible. So you want flexibility. The connective tissue literally is, is what has to do with in sports or in life. You know, all that connective tissue is where you're, you can move and be flexible. So part of the water is water is always moving and it gives potential because it's not staying stuck in one place. So the water is attempting to bring back that flexibility. Yeah. So basically it's the water is repaving the roads to allow those stuck energies and emotions to actually be processed and moved around. Yeah, I would say it's encouraging. Now, at the memory level, by if you free something that's stuck, it's going to have a better chance of going free. Then if you're doing spiritual type work, I mean, and supporting that process, you can even, the water will take on and, and further enhance any uh, work you're doing. Water will support the cleaning practices if you're doing prayer meditation, because water itself is a blessing. It's just the nature of water. The, the, environmental, the environmental issues, I always like to say, all come from man-made creation. So there's always a consciousness. If you're consuming, if, a, if somebody's trying to save money and create a, you know, a cynical farming product that it's toxic to yield more crops and it hurts people, by, by using the water, you're actually not just cleaning the toxin, but you happen to also be helping to clean the mind that created the toxin. Yeah. Which is, you know, to me, I always feel like, you know, we're trying to not just clean up the byproduct of man's mind, but literally, it wouldn't be beautiful if we didn't have anybody creating cynical products. Yeah. So. It'd be tough to get to a world where we didn't have so much built up, but at this day and age, you know, we have generations of toxins that have been built up and and stored in us before we were probably even born, you know? Well, you know, I, when I grew up, it was just more or less starting, but actually in the 40s it started, because it was naive. People thought, oh, we'll cut corners, we'll yield more food. It, they just weren't really thinking. They did not have... And I'm not, let's not blame people. Maybe they were optimistic. It was, the, you know, the, the scientists in the white coat, and you see the commercial in the 50s, oh, this is a wonderful product. Or oh, Wonder Bread, I mean, you know... Yeah. You, <laughs> I mean, Wonder Bread should be an iconic, uh, it's the icon of the food rev revolution of bad food. White bread. Even in the old days, white rice was considered by the, uh, in India, the, the, the rich people had the white rice. The peasants ate the brown rice. Huh. Very interesting. So, um, but anyhow, we did start to finally become aware of the byproduct of our own little, little white coat scientist creations and, and now fortunately there's a lot of consciousness and understanding the harmful effects. Now how do the toxins play into the the memories and emotions of people and, and stuff like that because it seems like you know yeah you might be angry or have different emotions and memories from your childhood or from someone that hurt you but there's got to be a compounding issue with the environmental toxins we've been consuming and those emotions together. Well, we did, like, one of the first videos I wanted to do right away was on the thyroid. And, you know, again, man-made substances like chlorine, bromine, fluorine, uh, competing with iodine, very similar compounds, and they take over. So it's almost, it's interesting, the encroaching of something that mimics and looks like something and then takes over, but it isn't the real thing. And it's very interesting, it's very similar to spiritual truths. Like the devil kind of was God's main angel, right? But then, not quite. Yeah. He mimics God, like God, and at one point very close to God, but then he goes deviant, and then reality changes big time. So for the thyroid, and interesting with the emotions, there's something called pseudoestrogens. We did a video on that. Mimicking estrogen, but not estrogen. Exactly. And it, when you get these false substances mimicking, taking over, the system goes... Well, that makes a lot of sense with emotions that you could just have an emotion that might actually be a false emotion to what you actually are feeling. That's it. That's that's true. In other words, you're close to the truth, 
but you're not dealing with the, a the actual transformative insight to, to make that emotion bring you back to, yeah. to wholeness. Or maybe you think of another time or incidents that happen and you try to use the same emotion for something that might not be the exact same scenario. Explain that more. So what do you think if like you were a child and you know you were hurt by your parents and you dwelled on this anger emotion and then in later in life you were hurt by a loved one of, or a friend but maybe not to the severity but you use the same emotion. Oh that's yeah the, the hubble corner will always Anytime you're hurt, you're replaying something. You're bringing in different components of memory, and you're, creating, you're doing a recreation. I mean, I... So that is true, and the opportunity, obviously, is to look at all those pieces and try to clean them and forgive and heal those memories, which is what the Hopopono is all about. And by the way, that's an interesting point. People will say, well, how do you heal memory and or why even heal memory so what would you think on that one i mean why why heal a memory what's the point what's how can you it happened supposedly the idea people say well it happened it's in the past just let it go yeah so that, that's an interesting and the best analogy i know on that is i don't know anybody that actually lets go <laughs> well i think of a virus on a computer you just let it go yeah or if you let it go what happens <laughs> So this is, the, this is really the hub of the Hopopono and of the difficulty. And by the way, why I think the water is an asset. Because you don't just let go of stain and laundry. You, yeah. you, or in my body work, you do not just let go of stuck energy. You really work in a very deep level to unwind it. To It's almost like somebody once said, it's like energy surgery. I mean, this stuff locks down. So it's intriguing what letting go if something is grabbing on so tight how do you how do you get it to let go and it's fascinating and this is again we understand grace or we have, some of us have experienced that but we also understand a relentless memory and this is the biggest challenge of all so how do you think and what are some tools and things you can do to help actually quote unquote let it go or bring it back up to get rid of this suppressed memory or emotion well I believe it's almost like again in the body work you have to become intimate with whatever's showing up and you have to be creative there are two tools in something called neuro-linguistic programming and even Hopopono has them for instance you can chop something up break it down to smaller parts, just like if it locks down. So part of the phenomenon is the memory literally can create a formation that like it's like a tumor or it grips you so hard your back, back goes out. So it has gripping, grabbing, very intense dynamics. So you were a wrestler. What do you do when somebody got you in a hole? Yeah. <laughs> you know, seriously. When well, somebody's there's, locking there's two down. two ways you could do it in wrestling, and that's to overpower them or be like a limb noodle and get out. Right, so we have different, and we see it in nature, there's different strategies for getting out of the grip. Yeah, I mean, you see your animals get stuck in something and they somehow get out that you'd think would be impossible. So, um, so this is a unique, or a, I guess a important step, that I, I mean, this is a step that I saw in body work. The physical body is actually a reflection of what they call the mental body. The mental body literally is a, is a thought form, just as powerful as somebody gripping you in a wrestling hold, but you can't see it, you can't touch it theoretically, and you know you can't locate it. So how do you fight something that you can't see, touch, yet it's gripping you, giving you the death grip? I think a lot of practice, meditation, prayer, um, different tools I'm sure you have that you use. Um, bluesy water, of course. Well, the best answer I can give to that one is what the Hopopono people say. Yes, you do all these things, but what is the ultimate point of what you're doing? What is the direction of, of and, and simply put, they're saying you're petitioning divinity, you're petitioning God, and you can only go so far, and God does the rest. Yeah. So you, to the ultimate breaking of the grip comes from divinity, and it's one memory at a time. So this is also, an, you could call this a pessimism or optimism, depending on how you want to look at it. Wouldn't it be nice to be all of a sudden everything's free? 
But it, what you're, what you're, what in the optimism of the work is that God will clean as God sees fits. But there are ways to get more intimate with the memories presented to divinity, and it's about presenting and petitioning all the time. That's why. So at the end of the day, yeah, you there's don't no, have control. No free ticket. You can't just say. Oh, yeah, please wipe it away. It's gone. No, you have to work for it, it seems, a little bit, you know? That every time you want to clean a memory, understand there's only one vehicle for that. Skillful prayer to deliver the information to divinity. Now, I will say this. You have to also observe the, sometimes how memory plays out, and maybe this is a little more sophisticated, but it, you have to observe yourself. And you have to observe how the mind or the memory then travel traverses into the body, and there are ways to then work on the pathways, which does help. Uh, much like if you had a river that was not flowing, and you were like downstream twenty miles, and you go, well, "Why isn't the river flowing?" But let's say there was twenty parts of the river that were completely blocked off. Yeah, you would have to literally undam each one. Each one. So once you you can look at memory in a way that way, and a lot a lot of things that I love about the body work is that you're observing the blocks, and if you start hitting the blocks and you get the flow, it's like the domino effect. I think it's funny you say that too because I think a lot of people expect that removing one dam in their memories and subconscious is gonna let the river just flow. Right. So they they say, oh, I just really have this one thought, this one memory. And they, they think they unblocked it, but it's still clogged, and they're still like, oh, and then they feel kind of like giving up. Exactly. And by the way, so to go to a more Christian and Buddhist teaching, and really all religions at the higher level, if you unblock even 20 dams in your own existence, well, what about everyone around you who has dams? So it's a, it sucks in a way, but guess what? You know, you have to then continue to work because you know you're not living in isolation yeah. and as a part of this human plane and whatever you want to call it you go and you help others try to get into the process of hopefully learning how to unblock or clean memory yeah and the more people that are cleaning it has a cascading effect and we start to get changes well and that's our hope with these videos really is to get out to you guys and, and help you kind of understand the subconscious mind and how to clean it and some tools to do that. Um, but really it comes down to you and you practicing and praying and doing these things um, because it's not going to happen overnight and it's not going to happen like that. So we really got to focus down and, and think about what we're doing and, and do it consistently. So we want to allow the grace process as much as possible. And... It's always, you know, the more you can study, the more you can learn. You want to go back to simplicity, but then there are details and complexities that you need to understand. And, you know, if this is just a lot of study. There's a lot into it. And, I mean, this might seem a little overwhelming to some of you guys out there. But really, I mean, we're here to, to help you guys understand. So, if you have more questions or any concerns or comments, you can always email us. Info at bluezwater.com. Attention, Andrew. Um, and we can answer some of your more in-depth questions. But really, this is a, a starter to show you about the subconscious mind, memories, and, and the pathway to get rid of them and clean yourself. And, and a detox. little bit about the physiology, too. Exactly. Um, we're going to do another video on um, a technique that Andrew uses called the Emotion Code and how it is uh, a great tool to really help with these emotions, past and present. And that will be in our next video, so make sure you check that out. And uh, we will see you guys soon. Thanks for watching.